I'm Venkat Ramaswamy. I'm a professor at the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. When I uh, have studied uh, in, in my recent book, The Power of Co-Creation, I've looked at uh, over 40 companies across 20 sectors globally. And uh, one of the things I find uh, very remarkable is that the companies uh, that do it very well uh, pay a lot of attention to what I call building engagement platforms. Uh, and that's at the, kind of the heart of very effective co-creation. And what it is is the way in which you assemble together people, interfaces, uh, uh, processes, and artifacts uh, in very effective ways. So, so the real question is, how does it become effective? Uh, and really, we've identified uh, the fact that it becomes effective when the engagement uh, through those platforms uh, are more inclusive, um, they're more meaningful to the participants of the platform, uh, the more creative, um, co-creation is also about co-creativity, uh, tapping into people's uh, creative abilities, uh, and is also uh, ultimately very transformative. Um, now, the next question is, well, how do we accomplish that? And so we've identified kind of four building blocks. One is dialogue is very critical. Uh, if you want to include people, uh, uh, dialogue has to be effective, which means the way people can share, interact, and communicate with each other, um, whatever they want to express, content and uh, their opinions and so on. Uh, it's also about ideas and generating insights. The second one is transparency, which is transparency to the events that happen on the platform and also kind of the output of the platform, uh, and to know what's happening. Uh, uh, and so ha having this feedback mechanism uh, between the person who's kind of uh, facilitating the platform and among the participants of the platform. Uh, the third piece is uh, access, which is access to knowledge, tools, and expertise. It ties into the making, uh, tapping to people's creativity. Uh, so allowing people to modify, extend things, uh, and not just use them. Uh, and uh, the fourth one is reflexivity, giving them the tools to actually put it back on the platform so the platform evolves and uh, it actually becomes what I call kind of win more, win more. Uh, people get, you know, I put something into it, somebody else puts something into it, uh, and uh, through those interactions something new is created which everybody benefits from. So I think those are some of the things that I find successful uh, companies doing. Sure. Uh, actually, I'll give you four quick examples because they are in different realms. The one, first one uh, uh, is Nike uh, and Nike Plus, which is actually a, a platform uh, through which uh, runners can be engaged uh, in actually creating you know, better running experiences and more, more compelling running experiences. So the way it works is uh, you have a, a, a sensor uh, which actually uh, keeps track of your data about your running, so which is uh, you know, how much you've run, pace, distance, calories, things like that. Uh, and uh, that uh, data then goes on to an online platform. So it can be collected through ma many ways today. If, if you have an iPhone, you just download the Nike Plus app. Uh, if you don't have an iPhone, if you're an Android user, for example, then you, can, you need to have an armband. You need some device uh, that can actually capture uh, the data and then input uh, into uh, this online platform, uh, which Nike facilitates, uh, where it's not just about the data now, it's really the conversations around the data uh, and to now derive value from the data. So Nike provides tools through which you can kind of chart your progress, you can set goals, you can accomplish uh, you know, certain things you want to accomplish if you're a marathon runner, for example, or if you're a casual runner, you can engage with your friends, uh, uh, or if you're a serious runner, even engage trainers and coaches. So they're constantly expanding the ecosystem uh, as these new stakeholders now. Uh, so they started with like the runner, but then the runner brings in the trainer and the coach, and then now they're working with fitness companies. So it actually grows partnerships. It started with partnership with Apple, then with Google, now with fitness clubs, with marathon organizers. So I think what uh, people ought to see there is that you, you may start with a platform, but as the platform expands, uh, what you're really doing is expanding the ecosystem, and that's really true co-creation. Um, so that's one example. Another example uh, might be uh, Starbucks, which has a platform uh, through which my Starbucks idea, uh, they actually generate ideas. But what is interesting there is that the uh, enterprise actually interacts back with the users. Uh, so it's a, it's a two-way and two-sided process where they actually take a lot of the ideas, but then they run it through their business screen in terms of things that make sense to them from their point of view, uh, things that are not only desirable by the community, but also which are feasible and viable. And so they have this kind of ongoing conversation. And so as a, uh, you know, as a Starbucks uh, participant in their platform, um, you know, and uh, you don't have to be a customer uh, to participate, uh, but let's say I'm a Starbucks customer, I feel more of a connection that, you know, that they're actually serious about this. Uh, so it, it enhances trust. Um, because today there's a, there's a huge deficit of trust because companies have been this kind of one way. Uh, so by having this continuous loop, 
uh, it actually uh, not only creates more connections and uh, you know brand relationships with the customers, but really uh, uh, ha has a very different and more enduring basis on which to build the brand itself. Uh, a third example might be uh, a business model that is created from this idea of uh, co-creation. A uh, good example is Local Motors, which has actually created an entire ecosystem of uh, designers who actually submit designs for cars. Uh, and we're talking about a car here, not just a t-shirt. Uh, and uh, so there's a whole process by which, of course, they manage that part. Uh, then a particular design gets vetted in terms of manufacturability and so on and so forth. That's where Local Motors is, is as much part of this process, right? Uh, then once it moves to that phase, now you can come in and say, you know, as, a, as a buyer of the car, you know, I want a different skin, uh, I want a different you know, look and feel, and so on. Uh, so as an individual person now, uh, I can now have a very different experience uh, uh, in actually building my own car. And then the entire ecosystem can participate because all of this underlying technical data about the car uh, is out there, completely redefining what an aftermarket might be. Right, it's uh, it's open source, so people can download the data. So anybody can now take that now that model that that local motors has now built, uh, and augment the value by actually you know building some specific accessories for it and so on. So anybody can actually participate. So you're starting to see the shift in terms of uh, even uh, entirely new businesses and business concepts uh, coming through this kind of uh, frame of co-creation. Uh, and of course, uh, you can also apply this internally. Uh, with, with employees, uh, uh, with employees as kind of stakeholders. A uh, good example of that is uh, Orange Telecom, which I also discussed in the book, The Power of Co-Creation, Power of Co-Creation, which is co-authored with uh, Francis Goya. And there, what's fascinating is here you have this large organization that has 88,000 employees. In the last five years, uh, they have actually been able to generate over 100,000 ideas and uh, take 10,000 of them and actually convert them into real projects. So the process from submitting an idea to actual uh, uh, deployment of an initiative, uh, that whole process is transparent uh, to a particular employee uh, who has a dashboard to actually track the idea, just like you might track a FedEx package. So it's kind of paying attention to a lot of these kind of details to ensure that it's easy to participate uh, and things are transparent again, uh, and people kind of uh, see that something's happening in the system, uh, and then the you know, trust starts to build up. Uh, and uh, so coming back to the case of Orange, it is amazing for me that 40,000 of their 88,000 employees have actually submitted an idea. Uh, so you can see the enormous power, um, if it's done right, uh, to actually uh, build a more enduring uh, basis for, for enterprises. Yeah, so none of this is possible without uh, technology, uh, because technology is really enabling uh, this large-scale participation, right, and collaboration and co-creation, ultimately. Uh, so uh, what is happening actually today is that a lot of, for example, IT companies or you know, kind of technology companies, uh, more generally speaking, are actually building uh, the, the basic um, components of uh, the, uh, these uh, engagement platforms, um, which support it. Uh, so I think today what is fascinating is Given that we have, for example, smartphones, we have you know, iPads, we have a uh, uh, lot of development of like, web-based tools uh, for communication also. Uh, uh, companies like Cisco have telepresence, for example. Uh, so there are, there's a whole hodgepodge. IBM uh, uh, has a lot of social uh, collaboration tools um, that it uses. Uh, and it actually offers as part of its uh, services portf port portfolio. So there are lots of new technologies, which are not just information, but they're more like communication technologies and technologies that actually help facilitate new experiences. Uh, so, so that's happening very fast in terms of providing those kinds of basic tools. Then you have people who are now uh, able to build through the latest generation of the web, which allows for uh, uh, things to be actually changed, things to be much more flexible or agile or um, uh, transformed, right? So today, uh, just like if you look at web pages today, you can go and you know <clears throat> personalize a web page very very fast. You couldn't do that before. So the the malleability, if you will, of the uh, uh, these components uh, have really gone up uh, in the sense that the technologies allow for things to be changed to to morph into something else. So uh, since you're starting to see these new technologies uh, allow for this kind of participation, I think you're going to see again. Uh, uh, exponential rise in uh, uh, the way in which we can actually utilize co-creation to, to kind of advance the way we create value together. Another thing I must mention is there's also this whole world of sensors, 
which are actually facilitating collection of very granular data. So your iPhone is, has a sensor, going back to the Nike example. Uh, and so, the world, so, so physical artifacts in the world are becoming more and more intelligent because it can be embedded with intelligence, right? Um, and so I think that's kind of uh, offers a lot of rich possibilities. Um, just to give a very simple example, you know, I just came through security uh, at Detroit Airport. And they have this now uh, uh, pilot where they have a special lane where you don't have to actually take out a lot of your stuff. It just kind of goes through. Uh, totally uh, amazing experience given the kind of experience we typically have at airports. But what I found interesting is when you come out, they have this little poster where there's a scan code and it says, tell us about your experience. All you have to do is just point your smartphone at it and then you can give uh, that experience in real time. It's not getting a survey like you know, in the mail or somebody calls you uh, at a point in time and it's removed from you know, that experience you had. So the fact that I could do that in real time uh, and say, wow, you know, that is cool. Uh, so, so you're starting to see you know, the, uh, the ability for these new technologies to actually facilitate people to not just participate in the, uh, on a platform, but also through that platform to generate uh, uh, ways in which you can create new outcomes that people value. So there are all kinds of possibilities from uh, having uh, this kind of much more uh, richer world of experiences, which I believe uh, is going to kind of drive the next round of innovation you know, through co-creation.